Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're looking at the uh, Sonoff uh, switch again. Uh, I'm going to find out now whether it actually can handle the current that it claims, which uh, for this particular model is 10 amps, or rather confusingly 2200 watts, which of course is not 10 amps at 240 volts, but uh, the radio inside, as we saw last time, is rated to 10 amps, so it should be able to switch that perfectly well. And of course the tracks did have that extra solder placed upon them. Now, for the uh, testing question here, what I've got is uh, just attached some of the wires already, and I've actually attached the uh, thermocouple bead there with some black tape, and it's actually on the neutral track there, although of course both the tracks are pretty much the same size and in the same place. So just take that on there to give us some idea of the sort of temperature it gets to. And then we've got the wires coming in here, so that'll be the uh, input there, full mains voltage. And the output, we're actually going to connect and use the kettle that's back there as a load. Now the particular kettle in question at 240 volts is actually around 11.5 amps or so, so it's actually slightly more than the 10. However, given this is rated for 10, it should be able to take a small overload like that, no problem at all. So we'll uh, connect all this business up and see what happens. Now here's the test arrangement, so power coming in here on this uh, connector block thing here. Uh, line and neutral just go into the device here, and the earth actually comes directly there because as we saw previously there's no earth connection or pass through for that. Uh, output on the line and neutral just goes into this extension block here with the four outlets. Kettle plugged in at the end here through this power monitor so you can see how much current is being used. Time here, see how much time is elapsed, and of course the temperature here in the middle, which uh, I'll just turn that on, and that will just show the temperature in degrees centigrade, so about 25 at the moment. Fairly warm in here, it's uh, July in the UK. Now this power monitor is quite old and the display is a bit uh, scratched up and bust, but hopefully we'll be able to see that. Can't use the other one because the other one only goes up to 10 amps, and this kettle is around 11 or 11 and a half or so. Now, it's slightly over the rating for this, but uh, if this is going to be rated for 10, it should be able to handle with a moderate overload for any length of time. So we'll turn it on and off with a little button on the front as we did before. Uh, we're not going to be using the app because there's some dubiousness about that and there's no real point anyhow. It's just purely whether it can handle the 10 amps. So we'll make sure the kettle's in the off position to start with. And I'll just close this up then. And uh, we can then turn on the, the button on the front. So the power's now on, we can see the voltage here on the display, which is about 247, that's fairly typical for this particular building. And if we press the button on the front then we can see the actual current, which is going to be displayed in amps. Now it's showing about 0 0.04, this is not particularly accurate at lower currents, uh, which is plenty why we've got that other one for that sort of thing, but anyway, we're talking in the sort of 10, 11 amps range, so that shouldn't be a problem. So uh, we'll uh, just start the timer going and then put on the kettle as well. So. Where it goes, and we can turn on. And we see the current there is about 11.9, uh, 11.8 sort of area. It's falling off slightly as the, uh, you know, as the element keeps up and its resistance changes now. Temperature I see there is now about 36 or so, and it is increasing. And uh, the thing itself uh, is going to get warm because obviously the tracks are of a certain thickness. And current's currently about sort of 11.6 amps, so again, this is somewhat of an overload for this device. I'll just try and adjust the uh, displays there so it can be actually seen more clearly. So we've got up to about 50 there, and sort of about 45 seconds in. So uh, what we'll do is leave this running for a bit. Basically, the kettle is obviously going to have to boil the whole contents of the water, and we'll come back and see where this gets to. So about 2 minutes 10 seconds in, and uh, temperature is about 76 centigrade there. So it's uh, certainly at the uh, higher end of where you would expect uh, conductors to get to. But bearing in mind this is actually an overload, so uh, you would expect it to get a bit hotter than normal. But it's not sort of going out of control or melting or setting on fire or anything, so that seems uh, perfectly acceptable. Now it's coming up to the actual boiling point here, so we'll just uh, let that complete and see where it gets to in the end. Now 
uh, the kettle's just switched off there as it's completely boiled. I'm just coming up to the three minute mark and you see the temperature there got to just around 80 or so on the uh, temperature gauge there. So that's pretty warm and uh, there's a moderate amount of warmth on the actual casing there but uh, nothing that you would uh, call sort of burning hot. Yeah, and certainly on the case itself there's no uh, appreciable temperature on the outside so it is purely the actual PCB tracks that got up to that kind of temperature. So uh, three minutes or so at uh, 11 and a half or 11.8 or whatever it was amps and uh, it's only got up to around 80 which uh, is pretty warm but uh, it's not obviously catastrophically going to cause things to fail. The wires going in are also uh, moderately warm as well as you pretty much would expect. Again they're not sort of hot they are just uh, actually warm to the touch. So it seems to be reasonably successful and bearing in mind that is actually over the 10 amp rating of the device so uh, it seems to cope uh, reasonably well with that. Now of course that time we didn't actually uh, use the relay inside to switch it was already on by the time we had it so what we'll do here is just turn on the kettle and we'll just close this down here and then we can actually switch the 10 amps by turning this on which will then obviously use the contacts to switch the lit in question. So pretty much as expected the uh, relay does switch the 10 amps on and off decently successfully and again you'd expect that because hey, it is rated to 10 amps Though we're doing a bit more then that shouldn't be a major problem. So that's at uh, sort of 11 and a half amps so 15 or so percent overload and it seems to cope with that perfectly well so I think in terms of switching and running at 10 amps then that's probably going to be fine. The uh, switch on the thing again will uh, certainly switch on and off at the 10 amp load because okay, that's what the relay was rated for so no particular problems there. Obviously I wouldn't recommend this with an inductive load because that's going to cause substantial wear on the contacts. This kettle of course is just a resistive load so in terms of these things it's fairly minor. So uh, not too bad there and uh, what we'll do next time is take the actual casing of this outside and see if it does actually burn or not because we've seen it melts previous episode but uh, whether it actually will set on fire and more importantly if it does will it actually continue burning without the flame being around and we'll also test those tracks with the other device to see just how high they can go before things start melting and uh, components falling off and so on and of course we'll do that outside as well so until next time thanks for watching